Welcome to uh, webinar today, uh, SERP stat uh, webinar, I'm talking about image search, image query mapping, and image optimization. Uh, going to start this off. So in 2013, Google added entities to reverse image search. They published a blog post telling us that they were going to start using entity I, machine ID numbers. Machine ID numbers were something that uh, Google acquired when they bought MetaWeb, which included the knowledge base Freebase. Freebase had ID numbers for different types of entities. And I took a photograph of a cactus in my back patio and did an image search on Google it identified the type of cactus it was, a San Pedro cactus, and it returned a search result that showed lots of pictures of San Pedro cactuses, which is, I thought was interesting that they were able to identify those. Uh, so, if you didn't know, machine ID numbers are something that are commonly used at Google. If you go to Google Trends and do a search for just about anything, you'll sometimes see that you have multiple choices of search types. With the San Pedro cactus, I can choose a search term or I can choose San Pedro cactus plants. When it has something other than search term, it's talking about an entity type. Uh, so plants is an entity type for San Pedro cactus. And that means that it's got a machine ID number associated with it. You can see these machine ID numbers when you go to the uh, actual trend page for the San Pedro cactus plants page. At the end of the URL for the page, there's a, a unencoded uh, machine ID number. Instead of having the slashes, they've got a percent sign 2F, M percent sign 2F, O2, Y, H, P, 1. And that is uh, the machine ID number for a San Pedro cactus. Uh, so they, they built these entities into Google search and they're a way to identify things. And this was the idea behind uh, uh, the knowledge base. When Google said they were gonna start searching things instead of strings, they uh, identified things like a San Pedro cactus, not by the words, but by this entity ID. Uh, and if you do a search in an Outdraft Search API Explorer uh, for Google, you can see that they've got a, a Outdraft slash M slash O2 YHP1, uh, which identifies the machine ID number that's associated with San Pedro Cactus. So in Outdraft, it's filled with these entity ID numbers for different entities that might be in the Outdraft. Uh, this is Google indexing real world objects instead of just images or instead of just pages. Uh, so if you go to Google image search and you search for something like a San Pedro cactus, not only do you see lots of images of San Pedro cactus, but at the top of those images, you see categories where they're showing you different views, different aspects of uh, these entities. They're, uh, showing you what they look like uh, in a desert, fully grown, blooming, and so on. And these are different aspects. The, uh, what Google refers to them as an ontology. Or, so they're, they're different aspects of an uh, entity that are related to each other. Uh, it's something that is interesting to search for. Uh, so the idea behind these semantic category labels is they can help you visualize different aspects of entities. You can see those entities in a hierarchy. It's not only a hierarchy, but it's a, a more specific hierarchy. It's called an ontology because the things within it are related to each other. Now, if you search for a place, you'll see the entities within it. If you search for a person, you'll learn about their history. And where this gets interesting is that you can search for a term that you might be trying to optimize a page for, like a keyword term. And you can see related categories to that keyword term, which might be things you 
one think about including on your page you're optimizing. So if I, 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 when this first came out, they started using these. I visited lots of places and visited lots of people in image search to get an idea of what was going on. And this is something I recommend that you do and also do with keywords that you're trying to optimize for. So I visited my hometown, which is Carlsbad, California, and I saw places like Legoland or uh, the village or and these are these are places in town that I'm aware of. They're related entities. They're aspects of Carlsbad that uh, are worth exploring in more depth. If you go to some other place like Washington, D.C., you can see lots of the different monuments related to Washington, D.C., uh, which is kind of fun if you had the chance to walk around D.C. and see these places in person. But seeing them and exploring uh, using the images is an interesting way to tour. Another thing I did was, okay, so I said if I were going to optimize for a term like California bike tours, I want to see what types of things it would show me that are related in terms of categories that they have pictures of. Now, these are things that uh, may give you ideas for pictures that you want to include on your page because you can visualize them, but they're also things that you might topics that you might want to include on a page about California bike tours or whatever terms you're optimizing for. Uh, in, in that way, it becomes a really useful keyword up and keyword research tool and a content creation tool. Uh, now, another thing I did was I, I toured through uh, lots of presidents of the U.S. Uh, image search to see if it would tell me more about the history of those people. So uh, John F. Kennedy, unfortunately, was assassinated when he was president. And they talk about uh, where he was assassinated, which was Dallas and the funeral. Uh, they show his wife. And if you look at other presidents, you can see some of their history, too. If uh, we look at Barack Obama, we know he's married to Michelle Obama. But we also see things that are relevant to his time in the White House, his history. Uh, I said, okay, I don't want to just look at presidents. So if I look at people like a Tom Hanks, it gives me information about other people he's acted with, people who he's related to, his wife, his son, uh, movie uh, characters he's played like a Forrest Gump. Uh, now, same type thing with the Jane Fonda. We see uh, information about her, her history as an actress, uh, her recent TV roles in Grace and Frankie, and she's starring that, in that with Lily Tomlin. So it's, it's a good way to find out more about people or places or things you want to uh, optimize for. Uh, you can also, you, you, don't have, you aren't limited to modern day people. I mean, so these pictures of William Shakespeare aren't photos. They're uh, drawings of him. But uh, they do have some of the roles that he, some of the plays that he uh, wrote, Romeo and Juliet, Macbeth. Uh, and they do have uh, information about the time he lived in. Uh, with uh, Michelangelo, we've got the same type of thing. Lots of some sculptures because he was a sculptor. Uh, some drawings of him, uh, information about him. And this becomes a really good way to uh, find out things that you might want to optimize pages for because there aren't really uh, resources that do the same type of thing. It's, it's good being able to visualize some of these things too. If you click on one of these categories, you'll see images related just to that category itself, which is a nice way to tour what people are talking about when they're uh, – uh, possibly showing off categories on pages. Uh, if you haven't had the chance to use Google Lens, it's an interesting app because it provides information about things you might take pictures with if you do a search by photography. So I was down at the uh, beach nearby and uh, saw a hawk on a, a, a staircase. I took a picture of it. And I used Google Lens to see if I could identify what type of hawk 
it was. And Google Lens lets you focus upon specific objects within photographs. So they, uh, I narrowed in, and it told me the type of hawk, uh, which is interesting. In Lens, we were told that they might take those machine IDs that I was talking about and use those in a search. So if you have a web page about a band like the Beatles and you use event schema markup to uh, tell people about a tour that the band is on or, or to sell tickets for the concert, Google may use these objects in that search and identify your schema, your pages, and show off uh, information about uh, your event or your ticket sales. So machine IDs are a useful way to connect different aspects of uh, images and web pages using schema. Uh, and uh, Google Lens also allows you to take pictures of barcodes for products uh, or logos. And it uses schema to connect pages to those products and pictures of products too. So it's useful using schema to connect things like that. Okay, another aspect of uh, what Google's doing with images is they're taking images that uh, people take pictures of and post on the web, and they're trying to identify queries that are related to those images. So in this case, I have some photos of a, a skyscraper in London that's called the Gherkin. And some queries that are commonly associated with the Gherkin is, how tall is it? How do I get to it? What are driving directions? What style of architecture is it? There's a famous restaurant in the building. What is that restaurant? Who designed the Gherkin? So Google's saying, we can take these images and we can identify queries that are commonly related to them and we'll do that. And that's a good thing to do when you uh, post pictures on the web, uh, identify what kind of uh, queries might be related to them. Uh, they may score those queries and those may be things that uh, your page possibly could show off for if you write about those queries, the kind of queries that people might ask about an image and you uh, provide answers. You might end up uh, being the one to show for fe uh, featured snippets of those posts. So if you take those images and potential queries and make them the focus of your page and provide answers to the queries, you may be the source of information about them. If you use something like back schema markup for the queries, uh, make the main entity of your page the thing that you've taken a picture of. Uh, you can use the machine ID uh, with the same as value to identify the thing you've got a, a, the entity that the picture is about, and that can be helpful. Uh, so Google also has been annotating images to learn about entities. Instead of just getting all its information from knowledge bases like Wikipedia, it may, <coughs> pardon me, because there's so many images of things it can learn from, it may start looking at what's actually in pictures. And I've got a bunch of pictures of Michael Jordan here. We're in Chicago Bulls jersey. So somebody asks, what team did Michael Jordan play for? You can say, Google can say he played for the Chicago Bulls based upon analyzing uh, these images, these photographs. And so they no longer need to ask Wikipedia, things like that. They came out with a patent, computerized systems and methods for searching, enriching the knowledge base for search queries, where they did things like showed pictures of grizzly bears hunting in riverbanks for fish. And so they know that grizzly bears do hunt a lot. They hunt on the water. They hunt for things like fish. The bear itself is what they consider consider a, an object entity. And uh, they look at the other things in images uh, to see that the related entities are what they're referring to as attribute entities. So fish, 
water, and grass that are attribute entities. So Google is learning from the images that people post on the web. And uh, it's not just what's in the images. It might be uh, what's related to the images in the metadata behind the images. Uh, so sometimes the metadata includes things like the location that the picture was taken. And Google can learn from that by analyzing the photo and that metadata. Uh, so try to use meaningful images when you post images on the web. If you uh, take a picture of a teacher in a classroom, you can show students and one with a raised hand asking a question. And this allows Google to say, okay, what's going on here? We'll try to analyze this picture. Just understand the uh, relationship between students and teachers and how, uh, and if you uh, have a picture of a lawyer, if you can get uh, the lawyer in front, arguing in front of people, in front of a jury or in front of a judge, you're actually educating Google about how lawyers work. Uh, same thing with farmers on uh, tractors in fields, car salesmen in car lots, showing off uh, cars to uh, potential uh, consumers, uh, doctors in hospitals uh, in front of patients. You're, you're showing what people do. Uh, I had a, a client who, who ran a limo site and he had a web page about uh, about high school students taking uh, limousine to the prom, and he had a picture of a couple of high school students. And I said, "Okay, take another picture if you can, but show the kids getting into a limousine." So this way, you can label the alt tag in it: uh, high school kids going to prom in a limo. And you tell a whole picture with the image. So using meaningful images can really make a difference in terms of how you uh, uh, optimize a page. So when you optimize an image traditionally, you're helping both the image rank in image search, and you're helping the page the image appears on rank higher in search results. So if you use so. I included some of the aspects of optimizing images that traditionally work really well. Uh, use meaningful alt text to describe an image. In this case, it's a picture of uh, Pike Place Fish and Produce Market in Seattle. So tell people that in your alt text. Uh, use meaningful file name. Separate segment words in that file name with hyphens because Google knows that a hyphen is a word separator. Uh, if you use something like underscores, traditionally that's a old school style method of uh, separating file names in programs. And Google doesn't re read an underscore as a separator. Uh, include captions in your pictures to tell uh, search engine. Search engine is kind of limited. It's, it's, it's not it doesn't grasp things as quickly as a human being might might so if you have a picture of a, a produce market like this and you don't have a caption underneath it that easily tells it what it is it may not grasp that and if you have relevant associated text on your page that tells what the photo is about in more detail google gets a better sense of what that photo is and may categorize those uh Categories that we saw, semantic categories, you're helping Google educate uh, itself about what categories it might place things within. Uh, and I want to mention this. It's also important. Uh, back in the early days of local search, people used to sometimes put pictures of uh, their dress in text, in images, on the web, and they wouldn't put the text the address text on the page itself. So Google had no idea where the business was because it wasn't reading the text and the images. It may do that now. There's a, uh, if you if you do some image searches, you'll sometimes see uh, relevant text 
in images on some pages on some searches where it looks like Google is using optical character recognition to identify what the text is in those images. Uh, but you're safer, you're better off including that information in text on your page. If you've got a address location included in text, don't take a chance. Google might or might not use optical character recognition to read that text. So thank you. I, I raced through that stuff. I have a number of questions I wanted to go through. Uh, I'm going to read them and answer them. So, okay, first question is, I'm a novice when it comes to optimizing web content for Google snippets. Is there a particular scheme on markup that can be added to images to help them show up in Google searches? Thanks. There are uh, ways to identify uh, and ID images that you're including of, say, something that you might call a main entity of page. You can ID identify it, you can uh, link to a picture uh, to show what that picture of is. And that helps I lets Google know what the uh, entity is. Uh, second question, if you're limited to stock imagery, what's the best way to handle that alt text? Keep it general or include implied details such as location relevant to your page. Uh, I tend to try to avoid stock imagery if I can, can. I mean, I carry my phone around with me everywhere. It's got a camera in it. I take lots of pictures. I take pictures of things that I might use later. Uh, try to build up a library of images that I might use for web pages. But sometimes stock images are a quick way to get something uh, that you... Uh, don't have time to take, take a picture of. Uh, the best way to handle the best way to handle all text, though, is to make sure the image that you choose is something that's meaningful. You know, if if you go by the uh, uh, concept that an image is worth a thousand words, make sure they're the right words. Make sure they describe the concepts or the ideas that you're trying to, trying to capture on your page, and use all text that describes. Uh, what the pic was contained in the picture. Make sure uh, the picture you've chosen does illustrate what the page is about. And if you uh, try to describe to somebody who, uh, historically, back in the old days, we used to put all text on pages because sometimes people didn't have fast web connections and they would turn images off rather than have them on uh, to speed up sites. And Sometimes people who are visually impaired rely upon uh, assistive technologies to read what pictures are about, and they read the alt text. So you want to have alt text that will describe what's on the page to people and make sure it's relevant to what the page is about. Uh, if the alt text can capture uh, what that is, it's helpful alt text. Uh, Should I use keywords for image alt tags, or should I just explain the image? Uh, like I said, use uh, all the images, all the all the text around the image to help explain what's in the image. Use your alt text. Use the file name. Use the uh, caption. Use associated text. The uh, total title of a page that an image is on. Uh, Google might look at to try to get a better sense of what the image is about. So all the words on the page can be helpful. Uh, can Google rule the world? Okay, Let's so... Let's take a look. So Google wanted to answer that question for me. Can Google rule the world in the next 30 years? Uh I think Google may have some challenges. There may be other people who want to start search engines. I'm, I get concerned that sometimes Apple or IBM might start a search engine and be a competitor to Google. And these are existing companies, but they're startups. 
happening every day. Uh, there's an explosion of uh, artificial intelligence companies that are doing things where they're trying to answer questions for people. And we may see some of those become more general search engines. So Google may have some challenges and they may not, they may be companies we know about that exist like an Apple or an IBM, or they may be brand new companies. How do you measure the potential of images? Through competitor analysis. I uh, measure how effective an image might be by the story it tells. How, how effective is it at getting, communicating, getting ideas across to people? And if it can do that, uh, even in the absence of text, though you use text to help people understand what an image is about, uh, it's a helpful image. I'm not sure you necessarily need to be con too concerned about uh, competitor analysis uh, as much as you do about whether or not you've captured uh, a concept and communicated it well with that image. If it helps you do that, it is a good image to include on your page. Last question is scrub EXIF info or not for some images, not others. So EXIF uh, data is metadata I was referring to earlier uh, during the presentation. Uh, some of the cameras you take, digital cameras you take pictures of include additional information uh, within the image itself. And this can be things like uh, the dimensions of the picture, uh, the location that you took picture at. And Google has had patents in the past that have done things like uh, gone to websites like a Flickr and analyzed information about some those. results from a search. Okay, so Google's answering questions for me again. So Google has gone to a Flickr and answered and uh, done image analysis to try to understand what the images are about better for things like when they're trying to uh, understand points of interest, uh, parks, uh, landmarks, and so on. They might look at pictures that lots of people have taken of those places. They use EXIF data to understand if that's where those pictures were taken. And they've uh, been giving out recommendations of places to go take pictures based upon analyzing uh, lots of photographs on the web. When you post a photograph to the web, you may still own the copyright and other people can't use that picture and call it their own. But that doesn't mean people can't look at the pictures and people can't learn from them. And Google's trying to analyze them, trying to learn from them. Like it, it sees pictures of Michael uh, Jordan in a Bulls uniform. It knows he played for the Chicago Bulls. So it's learning from that type of information. It's analyzing it. Uh, so EXIF data helps a search engine learn. Uh, so I try to keep EXIF data on pictures when I post pictures to the web. Uh, that is, I'm not sure if there are any more questions. I'm going to stop the slide presentation. But I look forward to any other questions there might be about this present this presentation. And I want to thank you all. Uh, have a great day and appreciate you being here. Thanks. Bye now.